morning. It's a beautiful spring day down here on Canoe Pass Release on the Lower Fraser River. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the mooring lines on the houses. So it's a beautiful day today. Pretty soon the storms will be here and it'll be uh, time to hold these houses on so they don't take off. Follow along with me while we uh, learn how to do this new project. Here are the three mooring lines we're going to change today. The attached points on the house and on the dock go through the heavy timbers and secured to the concrete behind. These are in good shape and be reused. The rope is at least 15 years old and some of the hardware is corroded. This will all be replaced. And here we are. We got our first line removed. It's just quite simple to unscrew the shackle and remove the whole assembly as one. I'm only going to take off one line at a time so this house stays put. I have to get the first one done, then one the second, and then the third. Come on up to the shop and we'll get started. So here we are back up in our shop with our line. We're going to first remove these two pieces. They're called the uh, shackles and that's what actually attaches the line to the house and to the dock. From there we're going to cut the rope, the old rope off, of the thimbles. The thimbles are used in order to spread the load out so it's not all at one point. It makes the uh, rope a lot last, last a lot longer and spreads the load out. So let's go ahead and cut the rope off. So let's review some of the parts that we're going to be using today. The first one is called a shackle. This one uh, has a breaking strength of approximately 45 tons. It's called, it's uh, size is three quarters and that's the size of this piece of the shackle itself. It's called a pin shackle, falls for the first hole and screws into the second. Once this is on the house and secured, we'll then use lock wire to attach the pin to the shackle so it shouldn't back off. Next piece we're going to be using are called thimbles. The thimble takes the rope in through the groove and back again and allows us to do a three tuck splice. It also spreads the load out so that the load is not all concentrated on one place. So the rope we're using today is called poly steel. It's made back home in Atlantic Canada. It's a one inch diameter. It's a three strand rope. So uh, the breaking strength on this is 24,000 pounds so we won't even come close to approaching that out here at the float homes but it's great for uh, UV protection and lasts a long time. So let's look at some of the tools we use using today. This is called a fid and it's used to separate the plies of the rope that allow you to put the rope through the different strands. I don't usually use one very much. I find that the new polysteel rope is easy enough just to twist to get the new piece in. Second we have a propane torch and we use that to heat up a serrated bread knife. I got this at the local uh, used furniture place. It was a buck fifty. Um, you'll never want to use this to cut bread again. And the only other thing we need is some tape. I generally use uh, green electrical tape. Uh, but for this uh, presentation today, I'll be using different color tapes to try to make it easier for you to figure out what's going on. So we have three strand rope. I actually marked on it blue, red, and green. And I also matched the uh, other colors up on the end of our uh, bitter end of the rope here. So we'll go ahead and uh, start to splice it. The first thing we're going to do is going to wrap it around our thimble. Try to keep that as nice and tight as possible. When you come out to the other side, you're going to see that we have three strands of rope that kind of fall across on a 90 degree angle. Okay, so red, green, and blue. What you're going to do first is tuck the middle one first. In this case, the middle one is the red one. So we're going to tuck the red one in where I have this red mark here. So twist it, give it a pull. There. As you can see, the one the red is now tucked under here. The one to your left, the one that has green, I'm going to go over the red and under the next one here, which you can see is colored green, and tuck it under there, and pull that one. So now we have the red one tucked under here, the green under here. I'm going to flip the whole thing over, and we have one line left. It's blue, and it's going to go under the one here that's colored blue. A common mistake is to actually try to put it through this way, because it's easier. But then what you'll end up is having two here and none here. So instead we're going to go over and back through. So. 
Okay, so at this point, we have one here, one here, and one here. Okay. From here, we take the rib one, we go over the next one, and under this one. See, so untwist and lift, push it through, twist. Okay, flip it over, take this one. You go over the top of this one and under this one. Okay, and then the third one. We have this one, we go over this one, under that one. All right, we're making good progress here. One more tuck. So over, under. Over, under. Okay, and then over this one, under this one. And there is our three tuck splice. Just matter of cutting off the ends and installing. The lines have now been replaced with new poly steel rope and galvanized hardware. By using galvanized long link chain on one end of the mooring line, we'll be easy to make adjustments in the future to keep the lines tight. You can see that I seized the shackle pin for black weather resistant zap straps. This is to keep the pins from backing off. So thanks for dropping in and watching my introductory video to float on mooring lines. And if you ever find yourself in the area of Canoe Pass Village and the lower Fraser River, drop in and I'll show you some of the work firsthand.